Okay, welcome to the November 27th, um, 2023 Legislative Matters Meeting of the Northampton City Council. I'm Alex Jarrett. Uh, if we could have a roll call, please, Laura. Sure. Councillor Jarrett. Here. Councillor Elkins. Here. Councillor Moulton. Here. And Councillor Nash. Here. So this meeting is being audio and video recorded. And if you're here in council chambers, per the recommendation of the health commissioner, um, committee members are set up with physical distancing. Masks are also available near the door as well. And um, it's fine to use first names here, um, <clears throat> though if you prefer, full titles are also fine. First, we'll go to public com comment for items that are not on the agenda. If you are here to make a comment about something that is on the agenda, uh, please wait until that comes up. Is there anyone here for that? Seeing none, let's move on to um, the November 13th, 2023 minutes. I have a motion. Move to approve. Second. Made by Stan Moulton, seconded by Marissa Elkins. Any discussion? Paul, please. Councillor Jarrett. Yes. Councillor Elkins. Yes. Councillor Moulton. Yes. And Councillor Nash. Yes. That passes unanimously, which brings us to 23.401, possible changes to Council Rule 4.8, public comment. And uh, we have um, <clears throat> one of the sponsors here, um, that's Jim Nash, and I think um, Karen Foster was going to join, but isn't here yet. Um, so I thought we would um, hear from the sponsors and um, take any questions for them from the counselors and then hear from the public um, <clears throat> and go from there. Um, Jim, would you like to speak to this? Yeah, sure. You know, why do I, I think I'll, if I could just quickly read through it, it'll kind of frame things. And also, Alex, as, as you pointed out at, um, when we were making the referral, there's actually two different things going on here. There's actually two action steps being taken here. And um, and it'll become clear as we go through this. Um Public comment. Members of the public may address the council and all council committees on addition, this is added, matters to the agenda for that meeting only um, in striking any matter for a period of up to two minutes. We added up to um, striking. This period may be extended or reduced at the discretion of the presiding officer. Um, goes on to say public comment may be accepted. Oh, you did that, Laura. Oh, okay. Sorry. It's all right. All right. Uh, public comment may be accepted for no more than 90 minutes, adding total for each meeting. Whenever language translation is required for a member of the public to address the city council, such person shall provide four minutes. Um, this is an addition. Individuals wishing to speak at public comment must sign up through the link embedded in the meeting's agenda no later than one hour in, in advance of the meeting. Striking, individuals wishing to sign up to speak must sign up um, with their name, city or town of residence and topic they plan to address, um, adding during the public comment period, those wishing to speak, striking, speak, uh, uh, yeah, I'm not sure why we did that. Anyway, we um, will be recognized at adding in the order in which they will, in which they signed up uh, existing text by the presiding officer and shall state their name and city or town of residence striking and optimally their address um, and adding prior to making their comment no person shall speak during public comment unless recognized by the presiding officer 
At the discretion of the presiding officer, a commenter's time may be reduced if their comment is not relative to the meeting's agenda. End of addition. Existing language. Councilors will not respond to any comments from the public. The city council will take public comment in person or by remote participation as the technology allows. Addition, for those who have signed up at least one hour in advance of the meeting at their discretion, and if time allows, all after all who signed up ahead of time have spoken, the presiding officer may offer those physically present in the room a chance to make a public comment. So, so there, the two things going on here are um, uh, one to require that people joining the meeting remotely sign up for the meeting ahead of time, mm -hmm. that, um, that uh, it's to mirror what we do here in council chambers when people are here to to speak to us, there's a sign-up sheet there. Um, the sign-up sheet has their address, it requests their name and address. We don't share the address during the meeting. We just ask for name and town when they um, introduce themselves. And the the other piece is to, um, to ask that public comment uh, speak to items on the agenda so that if somebody is showing up and and whether it's uh wh whatever type of speech it might be if they're not speaking to what's on the agenda that um that they we they can be asked to speak to something on the agenda and if they don't do that then the, the presiding officer would have the option of moving on from that individual so um the um and and I, I will admit that this is in response to the um, uh, the the incidents we had a few weeks ago where we had people showing up remotely and anonymously uh, sharing um, uh, their views on things that uh, were pretty disturbing to myself and everybody else in the room. Um, and that um, and these uh, what we're proposing here is what cambridge currently uh does for their remote public comment so that's where karen and i have drawn these ideas from so um that's what we're proposing let's have at it all right thank you <laughs> um i see that uh karen foster is here and i'll just Asked to unmute. If, if Karen, did you want to add anything as a co-sponsor? Thanks. Um, thank you, Councillor Nash. And um, yeah, I'll 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 just add. Um, you know, Councillor Nash did a great job, um, sort of describing it and reading it. I appreciate that with all the strikeout test text. Um, you know, I think the just the other piece of context for background that we were looking at is that rules changes are a relatively simple thing for the council. Um, so we were, you know, not necessarily anticipating that this would be how public comment is handled, you know, for the rest of time, um, but that this is, um, you know, a proposal we had, um, you know, that, that could help make sure that our council meetings aren't a platform for hate speech. Um, you know, that was, um, you know, one thing we were, we were looking at. Um, the city of Cambridge has dealt with it quite a bit. Um, and were really helpful um, and found that this really did help. Um, but also, you know, after our council discussion at our last meeting too, you know, I recognize, you know, counselors have legitimate concerns about making sure that that we're not reducing access for the public. Um, but I think just the one piece that um, I didn't bring up when we were introducing this um, was that idea that this doesn't need to be forever, but there's currently um, a sort of nationwide uh, coordinated effort to disrupt meetings. Um, and so that was a little bit of the background thinking on that. Okay, thank you. Are there any questions from counselors for Jim or Karen? Um, so your mind. So uh, my question is, is the is the online sign up in advance just meant for uh, Zoom participants, remote participants? Because yes, 
Okay, because I, I don't think that's clear um, here. I, I continue to, to think that that's not, not clear. Right. I would definitely read that as it just says individuals wishing to speak at public comment must sign up through the link embedded. Yeah, I mean, I would just add individuals wishing to speak at public comment remotely must sign up. I just would insert a remotely. I mean, we could put a, a, a we could add a, a second sentence to to specify that we're going to continue to use the same in chambers procedure of sign up at the podium. You make a note of this, Karen. Is anybody I'm making a note of the that. document they're working with? That... Great, Laura. If you can make a note of it, that's great because I'll, I I'll be leaving shortly to bring a bring a kid somewhere. Thank you, Laura. It's true. This isn't even your meeting, Karen. So, <laughs> Stan. Um, so, I, I, my question uh, for Jim and Karen is: is do you do you believe that? Um, the the provision that uh, that a comment be limited to an item on the agenda is, is a deterrent is more a deterrent to hate speech or more a tool in your toolkit to shut off a speaker. I, th I think if it's okay, if I, if I jump in, sorry, it's hard to read the room. Go um, right ahead. <laughs> I think it's both, you know, it, it helps to make sure that the, the interest in the community, you know, and, and people who live, work, or visit Northampton who are, um, you know, checking the agendas and tuned into what's going on in the community um, are the ones that are more likely to have comments to make regarding things that are happening within the city or on the agenda. And it's also, um, a, a toolkit um, or, you know, a tool in the toolbox if something's going um, completely off the rails um, and and not in any way related to council business. Thanks. And was this modified from what we saw originally at, uh, at the council? No, it, it, no, it is the same. This is what is, was introduced, okay. I believe, yeah. So next, um, let's open it up for public comment. And I will give um, each person who wishes to speak three minutes in this round. We may do an additional round later if we decide that's important to do. Um, <clears throat> and so in terms of comments, yes, I see people are raising their hands. Excellent, virtually. Um, just going to check something here. So we'll alternate between people uh, in the room and people remotely. Um, <clears throat> we'll start with Amy Martin. You could say your name and city or town. Hi, thanks everybody. Amy Martin, I live in Florence and um, really appreciate you doing this hard thinking. Like all of you, I was really shocked and horrified at the hate speech during the city council meeting recently. Um, and while I, at first I was supportive of, of some of the things that are in this proposed change, um, as I've been learning about this issue and how it's been dealt with elsewhere, I shifted my thinking and think that neither approach is appropriate for the way we build the culture we want in our city. Um, one of the ways I informed myself was talking to a lawyer that I work with. I work for a national nonprofit called Free Press that works on media and technology issues that can support democracy or crush it. And one of our legal staff is a lawyer who specializes in the tension between free speech and hate speech. And in talking with her about this, uh, she raised how many people or how people may have low internet connectivity for online registration, which creates a barrier, of course, and probably a disproportionate one that impacts folks who um, are lower income um, and people who may be working and unable to register in advance. Uh, I also think limiting comments to topics on the agenda um, is a problem. She spoke to how that 
the discretion of the council lead to choose what constitutes related or relevant can um, sometimes be super easy to tell and sometimes not be and could lead to unneeded limits on the public's participation and also what she called prior restraint on people's free speech. So I don't want to listen to hate speech like that, and I don't really want anybody to have to hear that. But even more than that, I don't want to degrade the strength of public participation in city government. I would much rather the city council greatly strengthen the preamble that you read before public comment to strongly voice our values that we hold in this city. And perhaps it would be even appropriate you know, if this is an ongoing issue to directly uh, address people planning on hate speech to consider the harm that they cause through that. And I would rather counselors consider that you don't have to sit and listen to hate speech, but that you can turn your chair around and show your back to people who are engaging in hate speech. I also would prefer that you strongly condemn hate speech immediately following public comments, uh, should there be a repetition. And if it actually becomes a regular part of public comment here, I'd rather develop a group of volunteers who are ready to speak at public comment to refute it in the moment. I really believe that our best defense to hate speech is not to suppress speech of any kind or to put up barriers to public participation, but to wholeheartedly condemn hate speech. And thanks for considering that point of view. Thank you, Amy. Uh, is there anyone in the room who wishes to speak? Ronnie. You're muted. Uh, I'm a, I don't think so. Okay. Uh, could you push the button there? Make sure it's green. Okay. It's green. Great. Go ahead. Uh, your name and city or town, please. Uh, Ronnie Gold, and I live in Northampton, Mass. Um, and um, I got to watch, um, no, I got to, I watched the previous two meetings ago, or however many it was, when the hate speech was horribly present um and my and i heard that you were looking at revising my immediate reaction was the simplest thing and the obvious thing to me was to just end the hybrid meetings like that then you can't have anyone who's not in the room um have the freedom to say whatever they want in the protection of the zoom land um and part of the uh response to that is well it's opened up you know so much more public participation um I think we might think that, but I would think that I would hope that we use data to back that up because I don't necessarily know if that's true. I mean, we assume that it does, but do we actually know that it actually has added to the ability for people to access it? Because it really is just about public comment, right? So like once public comment ends, everybody could watch it on the link on YouTube or anything else like that. They could watch it live on YouTube. They could watch it later at two times speed and get the meeting over quicker on however they want. <laughs> Right, but it's only that public comment piece, and anyone who wants to do public comment has the option of sending in emails and um, sending you letters. So I think they have access to that. I think that it's a slippery slope when you try to adjudicate it online with forms and all of that. Um, and as uh, the previous speaker Amy was sharing about access to the internet and signing up with forms and all sorts of things, I mean, I think you start to you know some people had enough time figuring out how to get on Zoom let alone get on Zoom and fill out a form an hour ahead of time, it becomes challenging for sure. Um, and so I would push you all to see, is there actually any hard data that this hybrid meeting is even necessary? You know, is the value added there really? Like what do we really know is the value added um, to that? Um, and lastly, uh, just, you know, as you're talking about the language there, you know, the last line that you're adding at the discretion of time allows all who signed up ahead of time have spoken, the pre presiding officer, may uh, may offer those physically present to me that's problematic because you know or, or it leads to issues because someone saw me sitting in the room and they saw a bunch of people wanted to you know i'd imagine you know someone that you didn't like or the officer was like i don't want to hear from that person they could say i'm not going to allow anyone else to speak um with that whole hour thing i wouldn't be here and be able to participate because i found out 10 minutes earlier that it coincidentally this issue was on the agenda today at this time and i walked over so um, anyway, that's uh, thanks so much for your time. Thank you, Ronnie. Next, we'll go to Henry Morgan. 
Your name and city or town, please. Hey, y'all. I'm Henry Morgan. I live in Ward 5 in Florence, Massachusetts, which is part of Northampton. Alex Jarrett is my counselor. Um, I want to start off by echoing everything that Amy said, and I thought that she said it a lot more eloquently than I would be able to, but I'll do my best. Um, from my perspective, I'm a youth. I'm, I'm 21 years old, and my generation has a waning faith in democracy and civic engagement. And I've made it a big part of my life's mission to try to engage people in our government and to try to build up faith in democracy. And something that I've I've learned over the course of doing a lot of this with my with people of my age range and engaging them in government is that there are a lot of barriers to civic engagement. The bureaucracy, the agendas, the parliamentary procedure, the, the rules that people have to abide by that is outside of the normal frame of human interaction that a lot of times uh, governs the life of normal people. And that can be a barrier. Um, so I wanted to say that what we should be doing is we should be trying to open up the doors of our democracy to people rather than close it. We should be trying to relax rather than restrict. And I think that if we do that, we'll build up a really strong culture of civic engagement and everyone's voice will be able to be heard and that will create a much more robust society. Thank you. Thank you, Henry. Anyone else in person like to speak? Uh, Martin Wool in Northampton. Um, it seems to me, and I might be missing something here, if people were on screens, if they're going to be hybrid, and they had to show their face and they couldn't be blocked out, that would go a long way for people not to be saying what they think they can say it anonymously. Um, but I wasn't at that meeting, so I'm not sure what the difficulty would be with that. Um, it seems to me that there's not a big need to be an hour before. I, I echo what other people were saying about that. You want to make it available and people should be able to find out 20 minutes before, 30 minutes before. There shouldn't be a different restriction for online rather than in person. Um, I, 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 and, and, and if somebody's on and speaks hatefully, don't we have the technology to just stop their, their microphone and, and quiet them if that's necessary. And the other point of being on the agenda, it seems to me that anybody can start a conversation and say, no, no, I'm, I'm getting there and go for two minutes on any subject that they want to, thinking that I'm going to get there. And like Amy said, how will you know when to stop it? So it seems to me we should do a lot less restricting, let people do it. These F I understand that nobody wants to do this, hear this on the screens, but I think we have the technology that when it's available, when it's actually happening, we can stop it at the scene. I'm not sure why that isn't possible if it's, if it's hate speech. Thanks. Thanks, Marty. Um, we'll respond to comments after we've heard from everyone. Uh, next, we'll go to Jacqueline. You could say your city or town and uh, your name. Hi, Alex. Uh, hi, everybody. My name is Jacqueline McCraner, and I live in Northampton. I was present at the November 2nd City Council meeting when several people used Zoom to deliver hate speech, hate speeches via public comment. Um, the speeches were absolutely horrific and nauseating to listen to. I do not condone hate speech, and it was very upsetting to have the meeting used in that way. The speakers did not state their name or town. They simply launched into their diatribes that lasted for about two minutes each. After about four hate speeches, I believe, were delivered, the council decided to end public comment for the night as there were six additional unknown raised hands in the Zoom queue, which would presumably lead to six more hate speeches. So it was clearly a coordinated effort. Um, I'm thankful to share that there was no repeat performance at the following council meeting on November 16th. Again, I don't condone hate speech or violence at any level or for any reason. Hate begets hate. And I can understand the counselors wanting to protect themselves and others from having to listen to hate speech. However, I'm not in support 
of the council's proposed changes to public comment. I believe residents should be free to discuss any issue at hand, and I do not believe that we should be restricted to speak only about agenda items. I do not believe we should be forced to sign up to speak at public comment in advance of the meeting. The proposed rules would impinge on the freedom of residents' voices and participation. Many residents already feel that there are abuses of power and anti-democratic processes occurring within Northampton City Hall. I believe further infringement on our free speech will lead to future ruptures rather than harmonious dialogue between residents, city staff, and elected public servants. And I wish to see the city become more inclusive rather than more exclusive, even on a short-term basis. I believe the desire to change the rules to public comment is premature, precipitate, imprudent, and rash. And I strongly urge counselors to allow the public comment rules to stand as they are. Um, I really agree with what Amy was saying as well. And to um, just, you know, speak up against hate speech when it occurs uh, in meetings. And something else that folks have pointed out to me is that sometimes Northampton residents don't get a chance to speak when residents from other um, communities speak. Um, and I'm not exactly sure what circumstances that those have occurred in, but if we can somehow prioritize residents and not, um, you know, just, just prioritize residents so they have a chance to speak at meetings uh, first, that would be great. Thank you. Thank you. Perfect timing. <laughs> uh, anyone else in the room who wanted to speak? Okay, we will go to Wendy Foxman. Hello. Thank you for um, calling this meeting, uh, well, for having this meeting and devoting it to this topic. I attended your special meeting and I feel I entered that meeting with some ideas and was really quite transformed by the conversation. And I'll get to that in a minute. I have some questions, I have some comments. Um, and I also subsequently watched the meeting where the Zoom bombing happened. Um, so um, I also just wanna say that it, 15 years ago, about six, for a couple of years, I served on the council appointed best practices in municipal decision-making which was devoted very much to this kind of topic. Good meetings, um, engagement, public engagement was sort of the driving force for the uh, council to appoint the committee. We have a report, I have it up on my behind my screen here, happy to share it. it. Some of it's no longer relevant because of technology. And while I'm mentioning technology, I'll just say that I agree with the people have said, I really don't think you can treat people who are participating remotely like me any different than you do the people in the room who wish to comment. And as most of you know, on the council, um, there is going to be legislation very likely to pass that's gonna require our public meetings to be hybrid. And the, there will there's supposed to be grant money attached to that to provide the technology, the resources to create that technology um, to make it possible. So at your meeting, I, I was, I read, I still have your, which you read already, the um, marked up copy of these suggestions. I was kind of on board with it, but the more I heard various uh, members of the council speak, the more I, uh, my mind has sort of changed about that. And which is that I think I've watched you change your rules over the last several years. And initially when you started doing that, you were having five hours of public comment. And I don't think that's healthy either. Um, and I'm, I'm glad that you've made the changes and I think they're good changes. And I'll just say now, and I'll say it again at the end of what I'm going to say, but I think you've got good rules as they exist, but you've got a few challenges you need to figure out. And I'm not sure that the, these changes well-meaning and I, again, I kind of embraced it when I heard it, but then when I heard the comments of counselors, I kind of switched up my thinking. I'll also say that I'm a Jewish woman and those, one of those zoom bombs was aimed at people like me. And, um, but I also heard members of the council, the other Zoom bomb was aimed at, and they seem, they were kind of like, maybe people should hear what's going on out in the world, and, you know? So I'm glad um, Javier is here and I'm hoping he will speak or answer questions if you allow him to. 
but I'm still wondering how you can deal with that kind of Zoom bombing. I've done a lot of research, I've attended seminars, I have a work project that in involves me in this topic, and I've not seen it answered except by all kinds of technology, but we have a Supreme Judicial Court case, I think that makes Massachusetts maybe a little different and uh, more challenged to how we address these issues than other states do. But as some of you have said, this Wendy, is going on. Am I done? Uh, that, that's your time. Okay. You could finish your sentence. I just want to ask the ACLU folks if they if you will speak to how do you um, how do you how do you suggest the council and other boards deal with these Zoom bombs? I'm I think you should leave the rules as they are. That's Thank you. And uh, what Thank your you. city or what is your city or town? Oh, I'm sorry. Didn't I say Ward Seven leads? Thank you. Okay, Ward 7 leads. <laughs> uh, anyone else uh, remote who wishes to speak or in the room? Okay, seeing none. Thanks everyone for contributing. Um, <clears throat> so uh, we have uh, attorney Alan Seewald here and um, thank you so much for coming again. <clears throat> Uh, and I, I noticed one of the questions, one of the uh, questions that was asked during public comment, uh, I think it would be helpful to give a brief overview of, of our what we're able when we're able to stop someone from speaking and when we're not in terms specifically in terms of public comment at uh, an open forum uh, public comment like we have presently. So. As I, uh, I'm, I'm not going to repeat the, my yeah. my whole introduction from from the council meeting because I know all four of you were there. Um, when um, speech is protected by the First Amendment, meaning that it is within the rules of the limited public forum, um, and it doesn't fall within one of those exceptions, you just can't turn the microphone off. And hate speech is not one of those types of speeches that, that are unprotected, that will allow, um, for that reason alone, um, the presiding officer to, to uh, turn off that person's microphone. I think that was the question that was yeah. lingering out there. Yep. So, Thank you. Uh, so let's, yeah, love to take any questions from counselors uh, for Alan or um your response to any members of the public or to the, we can speak to the issue at this point too. Um, thank you. Um, Alan, um, one of the things, and I think uh, Councilor Mayori made a, made a good point. Um, it is it is true uh, at the last meeting, it's true of course that the, it is a barrier to participation for folks to have to sign up ahead of time, and, and that is concerning. She also raised the point, however, that it is a barrier to service um, to be essentially, or a barrier to service or participation to be sort of in order to express, express uh, exercise your First Amendment right to, to have to be in a room and subjected to hate speech and, and that and that kind of thing. And and I, I would say it's a, in terms of those of us who are here, um it's it it's makes the service more difficult um for that in that regard so i what i wondered was um so we can't we can't cut them off is there anything precluding us from um within the room turning the audio off i mean the form is still there it's still going out on the internets on the interwebs it's preserved for posterity's sake um but do we are we required to listen? I don't believe you individually are required to listen. And as someone said, you could turn your back, you could turn your particular, you know, if if you're remote, you could turn it off. But I don't think that you can shut off the volume of somebody who's the, the, the substance and viewpoint uh, of whom you disagree, with whom you disagree. Uh, I just don't think you can do that. They're here. To, they're presumably talking to you. That's the <laughs> whole purpose know. of. <laughs> that's the whole purpose of public comment. I Everyone don't... is speaking with you, or addressing you. You know, and there is the the added value that it also is 
public and that distinguishes it from sending you an email, which is always out there and and available to people. And you know, sort of before public comment, we used to write to our counselors or call our counselors, um, and that is also a valid means of communication and because that's out there and people could write whatever they want to you i think that that's part of why you could limit the public forum if you so choose this is all a balancing act as i said last time and this is the balance that you have to engage in um how terrible is it to sit through this and not turn the microphones off um and sit through the hate speech um or is that outweighed by the loss of what people want to come here and tell you that is perfectly legitimate for public comment. Uh, so that's the balance. Is there any um, following up kind of on that? Is there any concern if, if some, if a counselor decided to leave the room, um, if, would there be a concern that we couldn't all leave the room because then there wouldn't be quorum? Or would, would there be any concern about that? I don't I don't have a quorum concern. First of all, you are prohibited from responding. Um, so, uh, you know, there's there's no deliberation over this that's going to take place while you're out of the room. Um, you know, but let me just say this is all brand new and this is all completely off the cuff because you're not going to find a case that's going to describe this. I just don't think you are. And uh, so we're sort of treading virgin earth here and, you know, and there will be mistakes. And, you know, we've already seen it all over the place. We've had issues up in, up in Deerfield with the select board and, and, you know, issues around the state. And uh, so. I wanted to respond to Marty's uh, comment. Um, the difficulty with the videos is that uh, uh, people do even more yuckier things uh, than just their their words um, when they turn the video on. And that we can cut off if, if people get pornographic, obscene and things like that. But still, <laughs> we, you know, it's, it's, it's another form of disruption that we, you know, are, we, we don't know until they're on and they do it. What would happen if someone's in the room doing it? Well, that would be a very exciting council meeting but uh that would be they could be though i think in the, that circumstance they could be escorted out it, not the hate speech i'm talking about, i'm talking about obscenity or things like that the hate speech they could not be cut off any differently than they were here um I, can i recap the hate speech i mean the the fighting words please be my guest uh yeah. so the the fighting word doctrine is says though that if that we can um we can um, cut off speech um, to a to a certain extent if 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 it constitutes fighting words. So if it's something that is likely to uh, in it pro is so provocative under the circumstances that somebody might get up and punch the speaker in the face. Um, I use Councilor Labarge as the example at the council meeting, but uh, but I think we all know it would be Alex, uh, <laughs> and <laughs> and and that actually so. I, so I appreciate. I'm sorry. I don't, I don't want to. I'm I'm into this meeting tonight. Sorry. Um, I'm in true. I mean, I appreciate what, for instance, like Wendy Foxman said, and the concerns about not treating hybrid, you know, people remote any differently than in person. But the fact is, is that we have a a real tangible. There is a real tangible difference. Um, that that it is different. Folks are are in a different circumstance and are able to accomplish and and perpetuate um, speech that I think and under other circumstances, you know, could, you know, we might have a little more leeway to, and also they'd have to be braver, right? They'd have to be braver to come in here and do that, and that's different. So. Um, so I'm just thinking out loud, I'll stop doing that. I would add um, that the ACLU has a, a, a great letter that they sent to the Mass Municipal Lawyers Association and, and others. Um, and uh, I, I think it's fairly easy to find if you search for, you know, ACLU letter to MMLA, something like that. Um, but it talks about 
yeah, if you make a true threat of violence, you incite imminent lawless conduct by other others, or you meet the legal definition of obscenity, which is not necessarily, you know, the dictionary definition of obscene. Uh, it's it's a particular particular definition. That, um, then you can be. Then we can turn, stop them. And those is, 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 do you, does that sound accurate? So the bright line is uh, speech that is protected by the First Amendment and speech that isn't protected by the First Amendment. And just to um, follow up on Councilor Elkins' uh, dissertation on- Oh, your mic's off. Sorry, just to follow up on Councilor Elkins' fighting words description. Um, you know, it it is uh, where a reasonable person would be provoked to violence immediately in a face-to-face -face conversation. And so it's not just anybody who would be uh, would resort to violence. It's the reasonable person who would be so incited to violence. Um, and, uh, you know, you would have to find that the speech is outside of the protection of the First Amendment in order to stop it. Is there a requirement to give your name and your and where you live? And are they not allowed to speak unless they do that? Yes. But those people several weeks ago did that. They gave fall what we believe to be pseudonyms and that we believe that they were not from Northampton, though they said they were. But we didn't have a way of proving either of those things. Which you don't in person either. Right. I think Jim. Yeah. Uh, so first, a uh, question for Ellen. So, um, so we are not to respond per the rules to whatever is said, and and we 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 can't do that during. The, then we have that uh, announcement portion immediately following public comment. We shouldn't be responding to any of the public comment there either, right? It's a matter of. It's just a matter of the council rules, how you handle that. There is no set rule that you can't respond to what people have said. As a matter of fact, I think Councilor Elkins responded to what somebody said in, in public comment, after public comment. So I don't, there's no prohibition. She did. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, our, our rules say um, that we don't, well, that's interesting. Now, I always thought of it as we, we will not respond during public comment. But it actually says counselors will not respond to any comments from the public, which is not a rule we actually want, because if it's about something on the agenda, Correct. we want to respond to it. Um, so that may need some some clarity. But what I've always understood it and how you've always introduced it is not we don't respond during public comment. Right. And that also that if somebody's speaking to an item on the agenda, then that is when we respond to the comment made during public comment. Um, so, so it, it, I, I, I'm, I think we need to get some clarity if there's a lot of hate speech or something that counselors feel uncomfortable with that maybe we look at the rules around announcements, whether or not we can say something there. Um, so I, I just want to frame kind of how we got here. So um, you've been hearing little bits and pieces of, you know, so Karen and I, uh, as of, uh, you know, around midnight of that meeting, you know, we were sitting at one of our local pubs. And at that point, we were ready to shut everything down, you know, as I'm sure everybody else was. We are going to stamp this out. Then the next day, uh, we started going into, you know, like, what are the actual things that we could do? Ronnie mentioned something here, you know, like, why are you even doing hybrid? You know, that if you got rid of hybrid, this this problem would probably go away. Well, yeah, but then you invite all of the, you know, the the the, the new participation that we get from people that would go away. But and that um and that that at its root, the 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 big problem and and Laura's been part of these discussions too. She's she would love that idea of making people show their video. <laughs> <laughs> that um that it's the anonymous nature that you know that somebody coming standing at that podium and you know and spouting the the words that we heard a few weeks ago um that that's a much braver act and that 
than sitting, you know, somewhere in, you know, in, in the United States or anywhere in the world and making up a fake name. And, you know, people do. I, I read the comments on The Washington Post every day and everybody's got all of these pseudonyms that they use. You never know exactly who it is. And that's the, the same thing that we're opening ourselves up to, you know, through this format. And that so we actually walk through. You know, we, we listen to um, uh, somebody who works for an insurance company and how they actually create, you know, the document who the person is as they come into the meeting. And that um, and we were, th you know, you know, they show ID and that's, you know, we don't want to go there. So we bring it back a little more. There's um, uh, Zoom. Uh, there's ways of getting invited to a meeting where you have to actually share your email address and who you are to actually get the link in into the meeting. You know, in fact, we've all joined meetings like that before for uh, conferences um, that and finally where we where Karen and I landed at is what was like, oh, look what Cambridge does. It's this very light version of all of this, which is just asking people to sign up ahead of time. And that that for in the case of Cambridge, it seems to have worked that um, the um, the the people who show up to anonymously share this stuff seem to have gone away, and that um, and so the the goal of all is all of this is really to find a way to kind of push back on the anonymous nature of it. And, and also at the same time, we realize this, this creates a little higher bar for the people who join remotely, but the people who join remotely right now, they're, they're at home and they're in the comfort of their home. And we have people here who have attended tonight and they got in their cars and they drove down here and that, you know, that to join remotely, there's a, there's a, bit of a privilege there to be able to do that and that adding the requirement of you know if you're going to speak for public comment just sign up ahead of time let us know who you are we're going to put you in the queue you're going to get your time on the floor just like anybody else who comes in here and signs up on on the sign up sheet here and that the only re reason we are cutting it off ahead of time is because because we what it it being new, we don't have the technology to keep the Zoom bombers out. If we if they if we allow them to queue up during the actual meeting, we've kind of defeated the purpose of having the sign up sheet. So the idea is to, to make it kind of a two step process. If you really want to come to this meeting and share something, yeah, get into the meeting. You know, an hour ahead of time. And, and just make sure you sign up and we're here to hear you. And you don't have to drive here like these folks and sit here and listen to us. <laughs> so um, anyway, I, I don't know if this actually in the end achieves what we want, but this is the lightest version that Karen and I could come up with. And I see her hand raised and um, She'll, she may refute everything I just said, but th that's the idea is to, you know, by creating just a little bit of a heavier lift for the remote folks so that it's not just completely anonymous. And um, so there you go. Thank you. I'll go to uh, Karen Foster. Thanks. I'm not going to refute everything you just said, Jim. Um, and that's exactly it, that we, we went through all these different iterations to think about, um, yeah, it, you know, all the different ways that we could still support public participation in our meetings um, while having some controls. This may or may not be it. Um, but I think the other piece, um, I, I heard a couple of comments about, um, you know, the remote participation. And I don't have like the numbers in front of me, but having been on council for four years, um, I can pretty definitively say that public participation in our meetings, especially public comment, has gone up quite a bit um, since we've had remote um, uh, options for public comment. And, you know, there there are people who can't get to the meeting. I'm participating tonight from a hockey rink, right? And, and that's true. People have public comment, whether it's caregiving responsibilities, you know, they have young children at home or disability or whatever it is, 
they can't physically get to council chambers. So it's important that, that we include those folks, but at the same time, the statistics for the percent of the population who owns smartphones is, is kind of staggering. I believe, uh, I believe it's, it's well north of 80%. Um, so there, there's all kinds of barriers. There's the barrier of getting to council chambers in person, um, or there's the barrier of the technology. Um, you know, Cambridge, um, you know, has, has a ways to assist people in signing up. We are proposing a, a simple Google form and, and, and yes, it's a barrier. And like I said, this may not be the answer, um, but at the same time, you know, when we're looking at one barrier, I just wanna be careful we're not ignoring um, the importance of a different barrier. Thank you, Karen. Stan. Thank you. So uh, I just, first, I just wanted to address the, uh, the, the notion that we should ban uh, hybrid meetings. I, I just, that's, that's not desirable and it's not realistic. Uh, I, I agree with all that, the count, uh, the Karen Foster just said that it is uh, the, the, the outcome of the, the past, uh, you know, almost four years now um, of allowing remote participation uh, by officials, by the public by staff is is a reduction uh, in the barriers. Furthermore, as Wendy Foxman said, um, there is legislation that that I think very realistically will be adopted in Massachusetts that will require the continuation of of the hybrid uh, options. Um, so uh, you know, I, I I really respect all that uh, Jim and Karen have said about the uh, the process of getting from November 2nd and that reprehensible hate speech to where we are tonight the the, the and I don't I don't have a problem with using a sign up form of some you know some whether it's the Cambridge form or something that we devise online what I do have a problem with is the requirement that it be done as kind of a two-step process that it be finished an hour before the meeting commences. I, I do think we should be using, you know, similar rules for people who are present and uh, people who are, um, who are remote. I do feel that for uh, some people, it will be a barrier to, um, to, to, to figure out, you know, how, how for, first of all, the, the just getting on the internet to, to, to use the form and then requiring it at a different time. If people don't have internet, you know, they may be borrowing someone, they may be going elsewhere. Um, it, it, it seems to me to be a, a barrier that I don't want to, uh, to put up. Uh, that's the, 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 the and, and I think that this, I believe that this, uh, the attack on November 2nd was a coordinated effort. The people, uh, the perpetrators of that are going to be able to you know, get on the internet an hour ahead of time and sign up using pseudonyms. I'm not sure what, uh, what device we're going to be able to use to filter out those, uh, you, know, you know, people who aren't giving their, their real names. Uh, so I am I am not in favor of a uh, of a rule change that would require uh, a sign up uh, 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 you know an hour ahead of the meeting. I think I think the sign up should should be up to the start of the meeting. Thank you, Stan. Um, I had a question for uh, Alan, um, which went back to requiring a person's camera to be on or requiring them to show their face, which has been suggested by a number of people. Would that be, is that something that would be permissible for us to require? Oh, your mic. <laughs> uh, I believe it would. And as a matter of fact, there is, you know, Cambridge, I believe requires cameras to be off. Uh, and so either way, if the camera's on, you, uh, and you require somebody to show their face. There's nothing you can do about a peace sign behind the person. You get nothing you can do about a swastika behind the person. Right. And as Marissa said, you know, yeah, we could be opening up. It could get worse in our video. So, but I just wanted to know the the legal options that we have. 
But if it's upsetting, <clears throat> if somebody were upsetting in the room, they could be kicked out of the Zoom. Yes, if it meets the legal definition of obscenity, online or in person. But a swastika sticker is not obscenity. No, no. Right. right. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay, those were my comments. Um, it sounds like, so Stan uh, moved us into the deliberation phase, I think, and uh, love to hear from others. Um, so. Um, so I I think where I'm coming down on this is that I I am in favor of a sign off, of, uh, of a sign up ahead of time. I think I do prefer, though, that um, as as Stan suggested, that um, that that part, as much as we can, mimic what happens here, um, you know, could work. And and by what I what I mean by that is that um, I mean we can we can leave signups open and available anytime, right? Once the agenda goes up, but that we close off that we shut off um, signups um, uh, uh, when the meeting starts so that we don't have people popping up and raising their hands in the middle of the meeting. Um, I think I still would require that they fill out a form that they give their name and um, that they give their, that they give their name in their town. Um, but I mean, if people want to speak in person, they do have to get here and I mean, so people sneak up to the podium, but if they're not here and and signed in and have made their intention known, I mean, we they that's pretty much their opportunity. Um, if so, I I feel like that's not dissimilar, and we could easily make that the rule here too, right? We could say it really is the case. You got to get your name on the paper before. Um, and I so and to that end, I would also strike the last sentence. Um, I agree. I don't remember who commented on that, but anything that kind of leaves additional add-ons to the discretion of the of the of the council president or the chair strikes me as something that could be a little fraught um with with the potential for abuse or claims. Um I so that's where I stand on that. I think I think that I'm in favor I I am in favor of a sign up ahead of time for online um, I I don't think I'd go with the hour. I I I don't think the hour head is the best bet. Um, I I do want to address moment a little bit. I, I'm I'm sensitive to the questions of to of uh, the 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 concerns about barriers and people not you know not being able to get on or having this much more trouble accessing. The difficulty is is that I mean you can't you can't sign up for mass health without internet and a smartphone like it, or it's very difficult and I you know I can't see my kids grades but through you know um apps and and I you know we the reality is is that um you know this is this is our world this is this is how we're navigating this is how we're um you know all getting around and it also isn't you know it, it is actually more accessible in in so many ways um so i'm i'm sympathetic to folks who who might have a tougher time getting online um to to do a sign up ahead of time but i i think if they can manage to get on the zoom in the first place they can manage this especially if we make it you know, sort of part of instead of this sort of separated or or two step process. Um, the um, as far as the agenda items limiting to the agenda items go, I don't, I'm I don't think I, I'm not in favor of that. I think it is. Um, I think it's be very easy for somebody to to start off and tell us how much they love Main Street and then descend into an, a, another hateful diatribe and. And then we and then we've got a dilemma on our hands. We've we've got a you know the, the chair or the chair or the the council president has a has a decision to make. So, I um, I I, I think I would, would I would not. I think I think we should stay away from that. I want to make sure there's nothing else. I a question I have um, and this oh I guess I have two more. I'm sorry, um two more points, two more things. Take your time. <laughs> I never talk this much in meetings. <laughs> never. <laughs> never. <laughs> um, unless I'm cross-examining Alan Siebel. 
um the um the a question i have is because uh, i i i think ronnie ronnie's point is well taken which is um the the public participation in the zoom portion of it is truly about public comment so i, I it's a question that i have as to why are we required to keep the public in included in the zoom um after public comment when it is still accessible on youtube and online like we're they're they're able to view it in real time at the same time and and is there any particular reason why we have to um continue to have have people you know any anybody beyond the participants and people who, who need to be recognized you know during the course of our business um I, I folks i think folks out there who are watching on youtube um or maybe even on zoom didn't know this but after after the public comment period of that um and people's cameras were turned off and they weren't allowed to turn their cameras back on but they found these little and we fixed this so they can't do this but they found these little emojis and they were anti-semitic and they were uh uh they they referred to you know other things and you know we sat there all night looking at these and the public didn't necessarily and i it just made me wonder why if the purpose is public access and transparency and people seeing our work and us do our work do do we is can we consider that um as to, as to whether or not that's something maybe we could address. Did and then, you want Alan to address that? Yes, but let me finish my last point because then I think I'll be done. Um, I also am in favor of adding to this since it's, it is a simple rule change. Um, uh, it Maybe it's something that can be adopted by each council at the beginning of the term, or it could be something we put in place, but a response that if 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 public comment goes in a direction that we all vote that we all agree that a response should be given that it be that that we agree to some language um condemning you know uh hate speech and things like that so that at the end of a public comment period where this has occurred we are able to immediately say this is our response this isn't our values this is unacceptable and the the constitution requires that we we don't turn this off but we want you know, we want to answer that. So I, I think that might, somebody suggested a stronger preamble, but I feel like this is something that we can do in, to say, we heard that, we sat through that, and that's not, you know, that's not who we are. And, and maybe it's not much, but it seems like we all wanted to say something. So that's, mm -hmm. that's it. Thank so. you. So Alan, could you address, I think I would love to hear both of those issues that Marissa brought up. Um, so um, I think that the the legislation that's likely to be passed would be satisfied by having the YouTube or going on NOM or wherever you go to watch a meeting. Um, the 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 requirement is that the public be able to see and hear, um, not to participate. Uh, you've created some participation moments like public comment and the statutes create public participation moments which we call public hearings and so you're going to have to account for public hearings as well um, but i believe that if you can um, solve those two issues um, you could do just youtube and facebook or where, wherever else you could pick up the feed um, and this i'm sorry the second point was the very last thing oh just a suggestion the of a of a of a a, con a consensus oh a disclaimer council yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, totally part of your rules that, that's there's just not an issue around that but except the way your rule is written that's not apparently permissible but that's an easy fix and there's no prohibition against a rule that would allow you to uh disclaim any comment um you know some no matter what it is. And don't forget, to a certain extent, you as counselors have a right to speak as well. So, um, um, you know, the idea that you would be prohibited from responding in some way to what you deem is completely inappropriate, whether it was about any topic, um, I think you have to think carefully about that as well. 
but I have thought about signing up for my two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so but the, the question then we would just as long as we don't stray into deliberation about something that's not on the agenda that that's the that would be the concern that's right the response mm -hmm. that's right but it also could be something that the chair could not have reasonably anticipated that gets addressed i, see. I mean I'm, I'm not recommending that as a as a strategy here um but you know in certain circumstances just a comment on to respond to what you deem is inappropriate use of public comment i don't you know that the that the body deems inappropriate use of public comment i i don't have a problem with that thank you jim yeah um so um i just want to say karen has actually gone into our um the format of our zooms and that um so the symbols that and different things that we saw popping up those are those have been eliminated people can't do that anymore and that so uh, any reactions other than raising their hand is not allowed the and the other thing is that um people being able to change their screen names and send messages that way that also has been shut down part of what that has been is our newness to Zoom <laughs> and figuring out it as we go. And so, um, yeah, so we've addressed that in the same way that we don't allow uh, chat during the meetings as well, because it's really just another form of communication uh, that um, that shouldn't be going on. So um, raising their hands, not changing their names, um, th that that has been addressed in, in the formatting. Um, the other thing is, um, that like alan was saying allowing people to speak during you know because then we have our public hearings um there may be um other items where we're recognizing people from the floor like we did the other night and somebody did a presentation that those people are welcome to stay in the zoom and um and then we recognize them i i think if we address the you know the uh, emojis or symbols and the screen name features and you know eliminate the chat whether they're in the zoom or you know on on youtube uh, i think it addresses all of that it it doesn't much matter that um so um but i think we can address a lot of that through the format mm -hmm. and i think we have through our mistakes right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, Alan. Um, in the process of coming up with the the document that we've been discussing, one of the reasons that I believe it was Councillor Foster uh, suggested that there be this sign up, and one of the uh, one of the concerns is that um, what's been seen in other places is that the people make their comment, log off log back on as somebody else make the same comment again log off log back on and so that's kind of why sign up in advance was advanced i haven't i haven't noticed that problem not here no one's but yeah no one's or they've been very now, good now at. i've spilled the beans yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah and i'll can i yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll, that was part of the idea as well. That that was a, a thing that had been observed in other cities and towns. That that just refreshing the queue and people just keep going with their their hate speech for as long as you'll let them. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, by setting a limit, just saying time for sign up is over, and you can't re queue with a new name. But conceivably, they could sign up under many different names ahead yes, of time. They would have to go to the, the more work, yeah. you know, and um, that. So th there's another thing that th the the Zoom bombing that we got prior to November 2nd, a lot. So there's apps out there where people who want to do disrupting or hate speech or whatever that you this is my understanding that you go in you can sign up for it and it'll it'll find you a meeting and you can go in and do your disruption and and um and that it's all run by the app the thing that was different about november 2nd was that we had actually um we'd seen something the the weeks prior that prompted karen me and 
and and and Laura to change the um the passcode and we we had just been using the same meeting link so we put in a new one just for that meeting and that's the one where we got all of the hate speech so those folks actually went to our website and got our agenda and pulled out that information um so it wasn't shared in in some you know on some app somewhere unless they picked it up and refreshed it in the last week or so prior i don't know if they know how to do that but um anyway the the whole thing is that by making just a, a little bit more of a step that it can't be run through an app that um you know somebody can still sign up anonymously but if they actually have to do it on their own and not some format out there that just cues them up for a meeting um that's that's what this may help address we're not sure though with all this ingenuity can they get taylor swift tickets or yeah no, that <laughs> all right um well i'll go ahead and say my thoughts here um thanks everyone and thanks jim and karen for putting this forward uh so i spoke a bit you know at the, at the our last or no, it was the November 9th meeting, just how important this forum uh, for open public comment is to it's it's to address the council, but it all it's also to address the mayor, it's to address the whole city. It's it's it is a forum for everyone to listen to. Um, and so I I stand strongly behind the freedom of expression that people have during our public comment period. I'd be very wary of adding the restriction to um matters only on the agenda um because i think that that could be subverted as as has been mentioned uh fairly easily um and i appreciate people being able to share the a broad the broad their broader views um clearly the you know the hate speech we heard is completely contrary to our values it it's important that we be clear about that it's important that we speak up and so i would i am definitely in favor of and i I hope we could offer this as an amendment of um, <clears throat> changing that sentence. Counselors will not respond to any comments from the public to simply say, uh, during public comment, counselors will not respond to any comments. Um, <clears throat> I think that, and then we have our announcement period uh, where where people could make a, a response if they so chose. Um, the... And so then, so then we come to the issue of the sign up. Um, so I, I, it's I like that we have a toolbox that we, you know, that we're thinking about all these things. We're asking about what's legally permissible and what's not. Um, but I am similar, similarly wary of of adding this. Um, given that essentially we we we're presently responding to less than ten minutes of of public comment that we've received. Um, I'm not sure there were some commissions that also got um, something, but um, so I'm, I'm, I'm wary of adding anything at this point, but I'm glad that we've gone through the process of it. Um, and then, we, you know, th thinking about the other requiring video, requiring to, to show their face, it seems like there's pluses and minuses to that. Um, so again, something we could think about in our toolbox and maybe try at some point. Um, but uh, at this point, I I feel uh, like the the only one that I would be in favor of would be that changing the the language to allow to to, to so it wouldn't prohibit us from responding, um, which seems. You know, it's it's clear we don't we don't that is not intended if if it's an item on the agenda. We want to be able to respond to people during those times anyway. Um and if we are if it's clear we're able to respond, you know, during the announcement period to just simply, you know, disavow, dis uh <clears throat> disclaim uh what was said, then that that's that's positive as well. Um so a little I guess there's one more piece of requiring people to sign up in advance. Um, and that is, and I know that people are here to speak to us, but people do um, get inspired by what a person before them might say. 
Um, someone might not, I know people who, like, I wasn't planning on speaking, but then I heard this and now, okay, I'm going to go and speak. And I think that that's valuable. I think that, that we, we, as, as this, as this forum that we're creating, um, we, we give people, we inspire people to speak. So that, that's another reason why I'm, I'm wary of that. Um, I would propose that we, we see how things go moving forward and um, have these options uh, at the ready to, to which, you know, it could only take effect at the next meeting. So kind of the worst case is we could get uh, one meeting where it's just horrible. Um, <clears throat> so that's, that's my thought on it. Alan. Just one suggestion, and this might be more for Laura and the next presiding, the next president, is that if you have concerns about, you know, straying off the agenda, put possible response to public comment on the agenda, mm -hmm. and, you know, as a recurring agenda item in, in that uh, whatever uh, agenda item you're you're thinking that this would fall in announcements or whatever you were saying, you know, just include response to public comment and then it's on the agenda. Thank you. Stan. Um, so, uh, yes, I think that to, to stick to that issue uh, that uh, Attorney Sewell just addressed, I mean, we're dealing with a rule that applies to public comment. It states, consuls will not respond to any comments from the public. I take that to mean during public comment. If we want to be sp specific and say that then yeah that's an easy easy fix and i think attorney seawald's suggestion is a good one or certainly during the announcement period that um comes directly after public comment uh counselors um i i i think we can make it clear that that's an opportunity for counselors to condemn hate speech if 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 we hear it um I did not address, uh, I spoke uh, the last time I spoke about the uh, the question of uh, of sign up online. I did not address the the agenda item um, uh, suggestion. and I, I too oppose that. i I don't think it's going to be effective at eliminating hate speech. I mean, we saw it on November second. Uh, someone preceded a slur with a reference to Picture Main Street. Uh, and I also think it's a very, very slippery slope in terms of uh, of uh, diminishing uh, freedom of speech and diminishing the kind of public square aspect of our public comment sessions. And uh, I, 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 you know, I was, I was, I was moved by a number of things that uh, the councilor said at our special meeting, and I particularly remember Councilor Perry referring to the disruption of democracy and i think that the limit to uh what's on the agenda would be disruptive to uh how we like to see that public comment period as part of our part of our democracy so i too am opposed to that marissa um could i i'd, I'd like to make a suggestion which is to um rather than pass a recommendation rather than trying to like wordsmith this um that that perhaps what we could do is break this down into to three parts to to um do recommendations on each part so one being the agenda whether or not the public comment is limited to the agenda and then vote vote for a recommendation on that recommendation about a sign up and then recommendation about rewording the response. Because it seems like we've kind of gotten into like three kind of distinct things. And then from there, the language I think will flow in, in the in the rule. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm sure the full council will want to debate these three points individually too. Right. Uh, Alan. I just follow up on Council Moulton's comment. Um, I just want to be clear. This is not response to hate speech. This is response to public comment. So you're going to have the possibility of councils responding to picture Main Street, anything in public comment, because it's not about the viewpoint. 
Okay, it's not about the subject and the viewpoint. So um, if you're going to open it up to response, you're opening it up for response. Mm -hmm. And one person talks about picture Main Street's not on the agenda, right? And then one person talks about it. The next person starts talking about it. That becomes a potential deliberation. But you you're responding to what was on the uh, what was that public comment? Okay. And so I'm not concerned about the open okay. meeting law. Got it. I'm concerned that you're going down a yep. path here that's going to turn public comment into a pre-meeting debate about things that are not hate speech. And you know, Council Moulton referred referred to it as responding to hate speech. It's not responding to hate speech. It's responding to public comment. Well, what I was, I, I, I mean, we, we've suggested two things. One is, and it was your suggestion that we have an agenda item that says possible response to public comment, which, yes, it could be anything that was said during public comment. The other alternative is to, during, a, during the announcement period, uh, uh, for counselors to express an opinion about their reaction to what they heard during public okay. comment right yeah that's what it was that, that, that was my point it's about public comment not about hate speech yeah. and so that you know you could be into a down the rabbit hole of picture main street or any other topic that's that's you know on people's minds um oh, oh, okay yeah. this is in the context of a discussion about that several people suggested that uh that in addition to the preamble, that there be a an immediate condemnation of hate speech, which I uh, I agree with that. Mm -hmm. those, those so those are both vehicles during which that condemnation could be could be made. Right, but you know I think what Alan Alan's just warning us that it could open it to suddenly we're spending a whole bunch of our meeting debating things that people brought up. So it's on it's sort of on the agenda that would be a, to me that's a little mushy because it you know don't you want to know the shouldn't the topic be listed um the topic is listed it's response to public comment just like any other you know <laughs> you're not saying what the announcements are going to be you're just saying they're going to be announcements right right i see okay no i i understand that yeah, yeah. Awesome. Uh, maybe if we were to go to make it clear that we can can respond May, I mean, by our own rule, we can limit ourselves to things. Response to public comment for issues not on the agenda. Mm -hmm. Like we we could be like, we're not going to, if it's on the agenda, talking about it later. Right, right. We could do that. So I very much appreciate your suggestion to divide this into three three pieces. I think that will be helpful um, and have three recommendations. I, I have nav not seen that done before. So um, not really sure what that, uh, it, um, like Rick. yeah is that are there any and i'm glad we have alan seawald here as well as laura to to maybe guide us if there's any concern with our rules in that um yeah go ahead Jim. so as one of the sponsors and i'm wondering if karen's here but um and since we're deliberating she's probably not um so uh, so here we are in deliberations, and I, I have to say, and I I'm, I don't know where my co-sponsor exactly stands on this, but I, I do know that we both were um, um, persuaded by some of the, by, by the testimony we heard from other counselors during our discussion about this referral, and that... Um, and that I'll, I'll I'll say that after the meeting I had I was reflecting a bit, and that um and and Attorney Seawald and I we spent a lot of time on the phone talking about this. I mean we did a lot of back and forth, and you know as the presiding officer I'm like. Where can I push back? How can I push back? I, you know, the the public wants this. Counselors want this. What can we do? And that um that the the pro public public comment is is a is is this entity all on its own that is outside of just about everything else we do in a meeting 
that, you know, in a public hearing, if somebody does some sort of rant and is off topic, we can ask them to get back on comment on topic. And if they still stray, we can shut them down. We, you know, if, if we're doing a, a a meeting like this and we ask people to interact on a particular topic on the agenda and they are all off it we we can ask them to stop but with public comment you're you're just opening up the window of anybody that's out there to come in and it's the free speech moment and and you don't know what you're going to get you you may get typically we get people from our community who are really interested in matters and yes and also think on their feet and go from one topic to another and tie things together just like I'm doing right now <laughs> but that um and that in the case of a public comment you're it, it 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 exists in a place where it's very hard to constrain and I am I after discussions with with Alan and in hearing what the other counselors shared, that I, I'm not sure if we're on the right track here with these recommendations, and that um, that you know that and 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 as I said earlier, this this sign up for um, uh, remote is is a very light version. It's it's not like who are you. We need to know if you tell us who you are. If you have the courage to come to our meeting and tell us anything you want to say, we, we deserve to at least know who you are. And um, and right now we don't have the means to establish that. It's it's pretty much, you know, we're going to trust that whoever's showing up is actually who they say they are, and that they're not going to requeue again and repeat the same speech. And um, and I I think that um, that in terms of the the sign up, um, I hear people's concerns around you know stopping a, ahead of time, you know an hour ahead of time. That's a problem for them. And part of that is we're we're still trying to figure out the technology of this. So I'm not sure I I want to move forward with the sign up if we haven't figured out the actual process as to how that will happen with the technology. So um, if we're going to um, have sign up remotely during the meeting, just like we're having people sign up here because people get inspired, they add their names to the list and we call them all up. And that, you know, that would mirror what we're doing here remotely and in the room. Um, I think we still need to figure all of that out before we make a rule. And that, um, um, and then as as far as the sticking to the agenda, you know, that was something that Alan and I talked about is to like, well, that's a way you could push back, mm -hmm. you know. And so I, it, you know, and there was a point where I wanted to push back with all of this, and um, and that um, because I'm defensive, I'm defensive <laughs> of my community, and I'm defensive of, of you know the way. Um, we do our business. I know it was, we were all very upset that night as I was. And that, um, but I, I think after hearing from particularly uh, counselors Perry and Gore, you know, that they were saying, you know what, this, this isn't any worse than other stuff we hear out there. And that, um, you know, we've, it, <laughs> this is, this is, this is the world we live in. You know, you might want to hear it too. And that, um, so I, you know, at this point, I, I'm, I, and also in this point in the term of this council, I, I'm thinking that I, I want to at least send this back to council with like a neutral recommendation. And so council can, all the council can weigh in on it and, and consider how to move forward. Um, I, I think that you know, with the remote stuff, there's technical stuff to be worked out. It's clear that the limiting the agenda piece really, it just doesn't fit with our view of what public comment is. And the last thing is, I worry about us opening up, you know, say, oh, now we're going to respond to what people said during public comment. All right, there's hate hate speech. All right, we we all say a few words that was terrible, you know. But somebody's you know, Councillor Nash. 
during your announcement time, I want to hear you speak to what I'm talking about right here. Do you have the courage to see, you know, that we could start getting called out and, you know, and, and, and that there is the danger of getting into deliberations and, and we're, we're here to be in a meeting to speak what's on the agenda. That's what we prepared for, not what came from the floor. And that, um, so that's my worry about, you know, opening up the floor to for us to respond to what folks are saying. So based on all of that, I I would send this, uh, I'd like to make a motion to send this back to council with a neutral recommendation. It may get voted down. And you know what, I, I think in terms of what uh, we're pro proposing here is um, uh, people wanted us to do something and we came up with some ideas and I think um, we've heard from the community around this and from other counselors. So I, at one point I, I had a horse in this race and um, I probably still do a little bit because <laughs> as a sponsor, but um, anyway. That okay. I hear a motion from Councilor Nash. Is there a second for a neutral recommendation? I'll second. Now we can discuss. I I think we had a great discussion and I think we have specific points that I think we expressed some for pros and cons against and, and a way of kind of biting that, you know, paring that apple down to get to the whole council to vote on. And I, I that's what I'd like to do. So I, I, I'd be voting no on a neutral recommendation. I would like the opportunity to say what I'm for and what I'm don't like and and bring that to the full council. Um, yeah, I, I don't feel neutral about this. Um, <laughs> so I, I, and I think it, it uh, I mean, I think, I, I mean, I've reached, you know, I've voiced my conclusions about several of the, of the uh, particular particulars in this, uh, in this proposed rule change, so I'm I'm prepared to to send it back with uh, voicing my you know the recommendation that it reflects my my view on it. It's not neutral, right? Um, and would uh, the <laughs> so uh, uh, Marissa's proposal to kind of take this in three different chunks would that feel like something where you could vote vote on each of those yes yes yeah um, okay i'll withdraw my motion withdraw. and we'll see if we I, if I, i'm or let's go with the yeah. motion that we can get this back to council i'm fine with that okay so i've withdrawn my second as well um <clears throat> the so let's let's you know we're, we're all that the rules say is we we make a recommendation i'm hopeful that it will not be a problem if we're saying a recommendation on this section is positive recommendation here is negative recommendation here is neutral so we'll try that so with that in mind um and dinner um <laughs> always <laughs> always um i would like to start with a motion um to, for a negative recommendation to for the proposal to limit public comment to the agenda. Second. Uh, so motion made by Marissa Elkin, seconded by Alex Terrett. Discussion on that section, that part of the... Jim. I, I, I agree with the negative recommendation and I'm ready to vote. Okay. Yeah. Yes, I'm ready to vote. Okay, hearing no no further discussion, uh, Laura, could we have a roll call on a recommendation around whether uh, around the uh, a negative recommendation on uh, there being public? Uh, <laughs> sorry, there being um, that people have to speak to items on the agenda. Councilor Jarrett. Uh, yes, right. Councilor yes. <laughs> Councillor Elkins. Yes. Councillor Moulton. Yes. And Councillor Nash. Yes. So that passes unanimously. 
Um, I and now I would make a motion, and I, I guess this is also um, would be a motion to amend the legislation on the floor um, to for a positive recommendation for a sign up that ends at the start of the meeting for Zoom participants. Second. Motion made by Marissa Elkin, seconded by Stan Moulton uh, to amend or to, for, on that section. But um, do we want... You want a separate um, motion? Well, do we want us any... Do you want it to put any specific language or are we just going to try to be more generally general here? I mean, do you think if we vote on the principle and then write it into the legislation that goes back to the council, is that backwards and wrong and terrible? Alan might have an idea on that. So I'm reading um, rule 2.6.1.4.1. Uh, <laughs> Upon referral by the city council, the committee shall have the power to make recommendations on ordinances, orders, resolutions, and rules. Not just a single recommendation, but a series, any number of recommendations. Mm -hmm. And I don't think recommendations requires that you actually draft the language, but you're making a recommendation that we have a sign up period that ends at the time uh, at the time the meeting begins. That's a recommendation. Mm -hmm. I think that falls within the rule. Great. Right. So I would amend my motion to, so I would revise my motion to just be the principle that we draft the rule to require a sign up for remote participation to end at the time the meeting starts. That's what I understood my second was. Okay. So I'm, I'm in agreement and second that. Great. Right. That non-second amending thing. I did. So, revision <laughs> uh, has has been noted, um, and uh, discussion on this recommendation. So, to be clear, this is to end remote. Uh, uh, we're asking for remote sign up. It ends at the point that the meeting starts. Mm -hmm. Yes, and you have to be signed up when the meeting starts. Council Foster's. Go ahead, Karen. We're, okay. Um, more procedurally, as you know, if we're voting on the principal thing as one of the co-sponsors, I would be glad to take whatever recommendation is made in the big picture and turn it into language um, for the next council meeting, if that's helpful. Great, Just so we don't you. have to wordsmith it right now. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Um, so I will say that, um, well, again, I, I appreciate that that is, is something that is we've thought about when we've deliberated on and is in our toolbox. I'm, I'm not, I don't feel ready to make a positive recommendation to, to do that at this point. Um, so I'm going to vote no on this section. Any other discussion? Yeah. Yeah. It, so there's the the technology component that um, I, I guess we could make a rule and then we have an expectation that we'll figure out the technology to to make it actually happen. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, I I mean, I, I'm I'm not anticipating that's going to be that difficult, but we only, you know have a couple more meetings. If we find that we can't technically make it happen, that's different than, uh, I don't think we should put aside the discussion and vote or, you know, on the on the rule because of that. Yeah. We have the technology. I'm yeah. Sure, it can be effectuated. I, I've, I've made many a Google form that allows someone to sign up for something and uh, I think it will be possible. <laughs> so uh, one alteration rather than the start of the meeting, if if we're able to figure out how to do it at the start of the meeting, we can probably do it so it would be at the start of public comment. 
So then the presiding officer could say to both people in the room and remotely say, this is the last, your time to sign up for public comment is, is here, finish up. And, you know, and in 30 seconds, we're going to start that then both what's going on in the room and remotely are happening at the same time. Now, there there's been times where people show up in the room and then they want to queue up. But you're letting both everybody remotely and in the room know this is what the rule is. And um, so that would be the one change is that it would be not at the start of the meeting, but at announced that that it would be at the start of public comment mm -hmm. i think that would be the do you want to revise your motion at all i mean really not particularly okay <laughs> um i mean i just it seems like uh, more for the presiding officer to handle and negotiate and deal with in the minute in the in the in the midst of it once the meeting gets kicked off I don't know. You're you've been. What do you think? Do you think it would be more complicated to have one more ball to juggle in those opening minutes? May I respond? Yes. Yeah. I don't think it's um, it, it's it's. I don't think it's any more difficult than asking the people in the room. You know, it, it, now's your time to sign up. Anybody else want to sign up? You know, the new the the new rules are. We're not going to just let people keep queuing up. And and I think that also addresses the remote queuing up, you know, like somebody getting back in line, you know, so if we, we get some anonymous speaker we don't like to hear from, we're not going to hear from them again because they've they've had their one chance just like everybody else. Mm -hmm. um, and does any part of your motion or recommendation talk about or this the last bit? Um, there's the at their discretion and if time allows after all who signed up ahead of time have spoken the presiding officer may offer those physically present in the room a chance to make a public comment i know there was concern about the discretion part but i believe if if we're able to have that distinction that if if anyone is here in the room then they they are able to continue um as opposed to the, it, it is the remote public comment sign up that stops at the particular time. Is that the intent? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think that that I think that that is problematic. No matter what we decide, that sort of ongoing ability for the presiding officer to extend public comment beyond whatever sign ups or hands raised or whatever gets gets to be discretionary in a way that could be i i, I know what you're going to say i don't want to right kind of thing so i i mean i think that's best just omitted entirely i don't know that it's tied necessarily to the issue of the signups before okay well, we'll we'll i guess we'll take that separately yeah. I, I would well I, I don't know if we need to vote on it I, I I would say if that's still there by the time it comes back to council I'm, I might propose an amendment at that time right. is what what I would say well you you did suggest earlier that that sentence be omitted uh yes do we sentence be omitted. sure and I'm fine with that I mean I would be my do we need to vote on that separately I guess is the if, is that going to be part of well I think it's important to be clear that um that if you if you don't include part of this sentence, then people present in the room will who haven't signed up ahead of time will not be able to continue, will not be able to speak. Well, if you remove at their discretion, um, then instead you say, if time allows, after all who signed up ahead of time have spoken, um, the presiding officer will offer those physically present in the room a chance to make a public comment. That would allow um, it removes the discretion part, mm -hmm. but it but it still allows it, it does make a distinction between remote and physically present. Oh, um, yeah. I mean, I guess I rem remove the discretion. Um, but I would ask uh, if we could just handle this section and then do a separate motion to to look at that 
yeah, the recommendations yeah, on the like last I, bit. Yeah, I don't okay. think it, it fits neatly into the this question about the sign up ahead of time. Right. So are there any, is there more discussion on the um, positive recommendation to require that people who are wishing to speak at public comment um, uh, remotely have to sign up through a link embedded in the meeting's agenda by the time the meeting begins. Yeah, I would leave it at that for tonight to be discussed. Uh -huh. Council meeting. No, hearing no more discussion. Uh, roll call, please, on that recommendation. Councillor Elkins. Yes. Councillor Moulton. Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. And Councillor Jarrett. No. <clears throat> So that passes by a vote of three to one. Uh, so then the third issue I think I heard you ad address was the sentence, uh, the counselors will not respond to any comments from the public. Um, so I would suggest, so this to me this seems, you know, just to clarify it, because clearly we want to respond to items that are on the agenda um, that we say that we uh, make a, a, a make a motion to make a positive recommendation uh, to change this to um, <clears throat> during public comment, counselors will not respond uh, to the public. Second. Discussion on that. Uh, mo sorry, motion made by Alex Jarrett, seconded by Stan Moulton. And and it's not I, so. I like that. It's just clarifying. We're not going to res respond during public comment, and it leaves open where some response might be. Right. It would actually. It would either, you know, if it fits within the realm of an announcement. Mm -hmm then someone could do it then. Uh, if it's if the presiding officer decides to put public comment response on the agenda, right. then that could be, uh, but we don't have to have a rule about that. Okay, all right. So I understand it. I'm ready to vote. <laughs> Roll call, please, Laura. Councillor Moulton. Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor Jarrett. Yes. And Councillor Elkins. Yes. And then the final piece uh, is the last sentence. Um, so if, if I may, I'll make a positive recommendation to change that sentence to, if time allows, after all who signed up ahead of time have spoken, the presiding officer will offer those physically present in the room uh, a chance to make a public comment. Second. Motion made by Alex Jarrett, seconded by Marissa Elkins. Yeah. Yeah, I just, so uh, Karen and I, when we were um, devising this language, it was a way to throw a bone to the folks who showed up. And um, and I, I see how the at discretion language, it, that's, should go. Mm -hmm. um, but it's to say if somebody's made the effort to get here into the room and that the that they're moved uh to speak, that um that they be allowed to raise their hand and join the throng speaking to us. Um that however I, I'll say this that I I one of the things that's clear to that's been clear to me about this is you whatever you do in the room you want to do the same remote and if you if it all lines up you want to be asking the same requirements so if we're asking people for addresses here we can ask for addresses remotely you know that if we're saying sign up is ending there it's going to end here as well so um that would be the I, I I would just I think it would help the presiding officer to have that in alignment, and that um and if things are aligned, then you know what you're you're enforcing. So, Alan, I th I just want to be clear: Does this allow 
those who are here to get in line again for public comment, to, to have a second bite at the apple, a third bite at the apple? Or is this for new comments, for new commenters? I, I, uh, my intention was new comments. So then uh, it should probably read, the presiding officer may offer those physically present who have not physically present in the room who have not spoken a chance to make a public comment. Um, so I will uh, amend amend my motion if I think you seconded it. I did. If that's okay with you. Sure. Okay. Laura, did you get that change? Um, one second. I missed the change. I, I don't that the end of the sentence was the same as it currently was, but I guess I missed whatever change occurred to the beginning of set the sentence. Sure, if, I'll read it again. If you would, so, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so the sentence starts at their discretion, but that's omitted. So instead, it reads, "If time allows, yeah. after all who signed up ahead of time have spoken, the presiding officer will." offer those physically present in the room who have not yet spoken a chance to make a public comment. So you're just striking the words at their discretion, comma, and got it. Okay. Um, and striking and then added, may. Who have not spoken? Right. And also striking may and, and putting in will. Okay. And then adding, uh, yeah, who have not spoken after in the room. Got it. Okay, thanks. Sure. <laughs> uh, any other comments, questions on this? Attorney Seawold, do you see any issue with well, extending um, something to people in the room that we don't also extend to the, the, the Zoomers? If you have a rational basis for doing so. There's a rational reason for doing so. I don't... I don't have a problem with it. Is Jim rational? <laughs> <laughs> uh, don't forget. Don't, that. don't forget your mic. I'm not I don't yeah. think they heard. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm. You want to just I'm counting that. on the the council to be rational. I mean, as a as a body, if there's a rational basis for doing that, then then I think you can do it. And. What is the rational basis for people asking people to sign up ahead of time? No, we're talking no. about the the Preferring. extending extending right, but uh, but I think that's uh, <laughs> it's related. The okay, well, fine. What what is the what what would be the rational basis of? I mean, it 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 because you're off you're offering to a person who signed who is physically present they don't have to sign up ahead of time with with this um so therefore what what is the rationale to requiring remote people to sign up ahead of time and then but not requiring people in person that that's the question that we that we would need to answer if there was a complaint for example like they're not why are you why are you allowing this and not this well i would say that it's been common practice for i don't know how long for people to sign up with their name and their address on the sign up sheet here and i think it's simply to help us keep record of who's you know because laura will it will share the sign up sheet is helpful because She's trying to keep track of all of this information and having the sign up sheet to go back to is helpful. I think it the sign up sheet can also be helpful in terms of, you know, who is this person? Is this a constituent? I heard them speak. You know, there's lots of times you just kind of get, you know, you know, uh, Ronnie spoke. W what's Ronnie's address? Well, I can go to the sign up sheet and I can find out, oh, he's one of my constituents. I will get a hold of him. Um, that um that. So that's been a common practice here. And I think the idea would be to extend that to remote participation, to just say, this is this is what we do for public comment. We, you know, we're not going to share your address publicly, you know, but we're asking you to 
minimally just give us an idea of who you are. So if we want to, we can try to contact you later. Right. So. And and the reason to uh, end it at the beginning of the meeting would be so that we can or it, it, it would assist us to to uh, have an orderly meeting to know who who we who we have uh, ahead of time. Yeah, I, yes. I, I mean, in terms of, uh, there's been times where during public comment, you, 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 when you're presiding, you're trying to assess whether or not you're going to hit the end of public comment, and um, and you're trying, you're also thinking through where's this meeting going. But if you have it, if it's clear at the start of public comment, oh, we're going to have twenty people comment tonight. Um, that um, you have an idea of where your meeting's going to go and that, oh, maybe I want to move that other item up on the agenda because the mayor's got her staff here, you know, that you, so anyway, yeah, it's it's good information. Thank you. Stan. But during that e extra period, uh, eight o'clock comes around and uh, you're, you're through all the people who signed up in here and remotely when someone then raises their hand and is, is called on i mean they're not signing a sheet at that point they're just coming up to the podium and speaking that's a good point and that what we should be doing then is consistently saying you may speak please put your name and address and then you know on the sheet and then introduce yourself that so that we're consistently doing the same thing Okay, I think I think the rational uh, argument holds water more for that procedure than simply allowing someone to come up who didn't sign up ahead of time and and you know and 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 not not having them on the on any sign up sheet. Then then I think it opens us up to you know questions: Why can't we allow that remotely as well? Yes. I'm hoping that maybe we could keep this focused on the motion that's on the floor, which is for a positive recommendation for um, this proposed um, language. I, if we're in discussion, I would say I, I'm actually prepared now to to vote no. Um, I, I I think I would either give this a neutral or negative recommendation, but I'm prepared to vote in any case. Um, I, I still think I'm where I was at the beginning, which is I think it's best to best left. Oh, best to omit that. So in the discussion, like we have people who come, they sign up, they sign up in advance. It's, it's very rational and understandable, helps us with an orderly meeting to know how long public comment is going to be and um, and to budget, you know, that time and no going in. And um, and there's not any of these issues about the sign up and the, the two different forms. So I don't take back my second. I do want to vote. I'm just going to vote no. And just so, so clarifying, you would you would propose that this sentence stay as is? No, I would just no. take it out. You would I take mean, it out part, entirely. Like once once we're I see. And once everybody signed up has spoken, then it's are on to the next agenda item. And that would mean that everyone Yeah, I I'm sorry. I'm forgetting uh, so as do, do in our recommendation did we were we clear did we clarify that only people who want wish to speak remotely have to sign up through the link or are we saying even people in person have to sign up through the link no the through the link is on zoom i mean or through the link is people who want to do remotely right i would add i would maybe add a second sentence to say people in person who wish to speak need to sign up at the podium um, and for everybody signups end when the meeting begins is what I would say. So, okay. So you would say if, if someone hasn't shown up early in person, they would not get to speak. I would put it more uh, on time. Yeah. On time. <laughs> um, but it strikes me that, I mean, if you, I mean, we do let people sneak up to the podium, but you know that's arguably disruptive and you're getting started or whatever i mean we could we could just say we're just not gonna you know you want to get here you want to speak in person just you know get here five minutes early and do that right. we see there's a queue out the door to sign up we can certainly accommodate that 
seems reasonable. Okay, thank you. I understand your position. Okay. <laughs> um, and obviously, I think, you know, you know, my position is that we shouldn't have, people shouldn't have to sign up ahead of time at, at present, um, whether in, whether they're here or remote. Um, and the reason that I wanted to add this was, was to give at least the people who showed up here the opportunity to speak, uh, even if they hadn't signed up ahead of time. Um, so I'm happy to vote on, on that. Are there, is there any more discussion? Uh, yeah. Well, uh, I guess I'm stuck on uh, Attorney Seawald's uh, suggestion that we would need a rational reason for treating late late comment from in person different from differently from late comment from remote remote right so uh, for that reason uh I, I too will vote no on this i that is, that is uh, the, a very persuasive uh reason because when i think about what what is when i'm trying to come up with a rational reason I'm not sure that it it holds water um, when there's a difference, which is part of the reason I think I don't want there to be that the the required sign up in advance. Um, so uh, go ahead. I I just got to say how conflicted I am. This is this is the Karen and I worked on. <laughs> <laughs> and as i'm working on it i'm going i don't like that idea either but and anyway that um yeah I, I i just think as the chair things being consistent um i yeah i'm gonna vote no on this i i think that if we're gonna do the remote piece that um that uh, you know, that we need to line up what's in the room with what's going on remotely. And also the other thing in terms of signing up ahead of time, Laura puts those sign-up sheets in here. They're they're here like two hours before the meeting or whenever she sets up the room. They, they could be here all day sometimes, you know, so that, um, that people are welcome to come in. They can come down and, you know, come in here at five sign up and then come back at seven and you know they're on the top of the list in fact people do just that so um there is like a signing up early here or signing up rem remotely i i think that the two kind of mirror each other there yeah um so what are we voting on so i think i think <laughs> i'm just gonna withdraw my mouth um okay and uh then I would like to make a motion. Great. <laughs> I I would uh, uh, move uh, that um, I would move a positive recommendation for omitting the entire last sentence entirely. Second. Any discussion? Jim. <laughs> I'm okay with that. <laughs> And it's, yeah, I think I'm going to vote no on it. Not, not because I, I understand the logical nature. If, if we, if we are delivering a positive recommendation for the sign up ahead of time, that makes sense. Um, but since I would not like people to have to do that, uh, I'll, I'll vote no on that. So. Uh, seeing no further discussion, uh, roll call, please. Councillor Nash. Um, I'm voting, hold it. Yes is to omit the whole last sentence. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Councillor Jarrett. No. Councillor Elkins. Yes. And Councillor Moulton. Yes. That passes that positive recommendation to, uh, remove the last sentence uh, that was the motion was made by Marissa Elkins and seconded by Stan Moulton passes three to one. And is there anything else that we wish to deliver a recommendation about this? Well, I was going to deliver a recommendation. We adjourn. Well, 
<laughs> I, don't want, I don't have another recommendation about this other than I want to say that I this is not to diminish in any way the work that uh, Jim and Karen did. I mean, this is a very necessary and uh, I think useful conversation. And I certainly appreciate uh, your kicking it off with with the uh, with what you brought to us at that special meeting. And, and I'm glad that we referred it as, as Alex uh, correctly said, this is cer certainly something in our purview and it's been a very, uh, I think, productive use of two hours. Yeah, I absolutely agree. I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, the discussion with the wider council. Mm -hmm. Any other comments on this, Jim? Thanks, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> it's really interesting butchering something that <laughs> that you brought forward, you know, so but yeah, I, I do. I agree. This has been a useful discussion for all of us. And we're still figuring this out. And I appreciate the no's and the yeses and the I I, I think our, our we our hearts are all kind of in the same place. And we're just trying to figure out how to have rules to manage that. So that's it thank you and seeing uh, unless there's new business and entertain a motion to adjourn Move to adjourn second <laughs> made by marissa elkins and seconded by stan then uh roll call please councillor jarrett yes councillor elkins Two roll calls <laughs> yes councillor moulton yes and councillor nash yes we are adjourned so